two options. The first one is that you can have fun, enjoy life, party, play video games during your teenage years, but then face harsh reality in your 20s and be a slave till the end of your life. A few inches later, I'm a 16 year old content creator and entrepreneur. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Bruh, who's letting these boys cook? So today, we're going to be talking about self-improvement. But not actually self-improvement. No, we're not talking about the idea of making yourself better. We're not talking about the concept and idea of self-improvement. But rather, we're talking about self-improvement, the industry, and what the hell is going on there. You see, I'm a guy that actually took the time to work on my flaws and improve myself as a person before I got exposed to the idea of self-improvement. And because I built my own framework for critical thinking and problem solving by dealing with actual real life problems, when I look at what is spewed as self-improvement nowadays, all I can think is, what is this nonsense lol? So I'm going to expose to y'all what's really going on here and my gripes with what self-improvement has become. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Let's begin. The first issue is the consolidation of self-improvement into a prescription. If we think about what self-improvement should mean by definition, it should be incorporating habits that make us better people and performers, right? But instead, it has turned into a compilation of weird disciplines. We got no fat, cold showers, waking up at 5 a.m., meditation, mewing, push-ups, journaling, and a few other random disciplines. Now, most of these habits do have some good practical uses on their own, but my issue with this is that most of these self-improvement guys have condensed them all into a performative prescription that you should take to improve your life. Look at how some of these guys are referring to self-improvement right now. It doesn't sound like a blanket term for their efforts, but more like a drug that they're on. And the reason why it's performative is because a lot of younger guys have become deluded into thinking that they just need to take the self-improvement pill, get with the program, and they'll do better in life. I'm sure that in general, most guys have similar aspirations. Get rich, get a girlfriend, wipe her up and start a family, and become your own man. But then they misconstrue their efforts with these self-improvement habits as actual progress towards these goals. Let's take NoFap for example. We got guys obsessing over how many days they can go without choking their chicken to build sexual discipline and focus. Is that really what it's all about? Or is it a coping mechanism for having no options with dating? Does a guy who wants a girlfriend address the situation better by learning how to approach and interact with women? Or by counting the days since he last beat his meat? You tell me. And lastly, we should be more critical about who is giving what message. Pay attention to what some of these guys are proclaiming and maybe think a little bit if there's any hypocrisy behind them. I'd say a part of real self-improvement is learning to evaluate good information and check your sources. I don't think a 16 year old can tell me about wasting away your 20s or a guy that has a girlfriend who's not practicing abstinence proclaiming to still do no fap. You shouldn't let guys who don't know what they're talking about get to you or impose certain values onto you while being hypocrites. Learn to create your own goals and values and learn to evaluate information so you can take in good advice and disregard bad advice. The second issue is the creation of cults in the self-improvement space. I'm pretty sure Hamza was the first one to do it, but once he did it, many others followed. You would think that a guy that's promoting something positive like self-growth will use a more suitable word for his community but there's a reason why he used the word cult and not something like club or clan. Remember my last point being how self-improvement has been consolidated into a prescription? Well, you get a guy like Hamza who builds a following first by explaining and then developing his version of self-improvement. It obviously resonated with a lot of people because he grew quickly. And once you build a following, there's always anticipation for what comes next. So what's the point of creating a following and then placing yourself as the figurehead while calling it a cult? I'll say it. It creates dependency. The irony of most self-improvers is that they will blindly follow whoever preaches sense to them first. Hamza may have been the first one to take advantage of this, but there are many other guys who followed in his steed and created their own self-improvement cults. And if we zoom out and take a big picture look at these cults, it kind of all looks like an MLM. So let me check this point for you guys. Obviously you look up to these influencers because they're ahead of you in areas that you want to improve on, but they're not living your life. They don't know who you are, what your motivations and intentions are, and what issues you need help with. But let me remind you, they are just as human as you and I. We take up the same airspace and we have the same bodily functions. Hell, you even probably pass by some of these guys on the street without noticing. Don't let these guys talk down to you and shame you and box you in as one of their imaginary characters. Your journey is your own and you don't have to be a mindless follower to someone 
just because they have influence and you perceive them to be better than you. The last issue I have is this pushing of the excessive idea to chase making money, aka money maxing. I get it. We all want to be rich so we can take care of ourselves and our families and be financially independent. But the lace idea that's being pushed in the self-improvement space is that Bro, you can just be an educator influencer. Yeah, that sounds great and all, but remember, the average self improver hasn't accomplished anything worth mentioning, and now their cult leader is telling them that they should aspire to monetize value without actually having any. So how are you going to get the knowledge to do so? Easy, you buy into their course or paid community. Your creator created a course on how to create a course, and you just have to buy in to get the sauce. And once you do that, you are no longer just a common fan or follower you are now a customer. You became part of the ecosystem for someone else that you believe you can create for yourself. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't invest in the things that you want or shame these guys for taking advantage of such a lucrative opportunity. It's actually a genius business move. But the issue is more of seeing who's selling what and if the value asked meets the value provided. Because there are a number of these influencers who take advantage of selling the dream of doing better in life to their gullible followers. You, Jeffrey, with no followers and no accomplishments can make thousands of dollars just like the big man with millions of followers if you just invest into them first. How did a guy like Iman Gatsi get shooed into the self-improvement space? Because he makes a lot of money selling gullible guys on how to make money. How the f*** did Andrew Tate get associated with self-improvement? Because he's got hella cash and a Bugatti, muscles, and a stern attitude when it comes to masculinity. I believe that if you want to be successful monetizing your value, then you should provide so much fit that it only makes sense for people to buy in if they want more. But the idea of making money off selling the idea to make money is absolutely bonkers if you have nothing to show for it. And people who are smart consumers will call out on it. So after all this critique that I have on the self-improvement space, why am I bringing myself into it? Because like I said earlier, I was someone who actually worked on my life to become better at different aspects rather than someone who just bought into the idea of self-improvement. And I want to inject some critical thinking into it. There are many aspects in life we can work on, and I believe the best way we can do that is to address each one on their own and find your own way to learn how to succeed. More importantly, I want to encourage people to be more mindful of their effort and to not resort to coping when they can be doing better. This is why I only speak and advise from my own experiences while encouraging others to think for themselves. I was always testing various methods to find what worked best for myself and then tested them some more when I advised others. And as I continue to build my own community and following, I want to make sure that people see me as a peer. At the end of the day, I'm just one guy on earth who figured some stuff out, and I can use my knowledge to help someone else make some big moves in their own life. I can't speak to whatever they call self-improvement nowadays, but my version of self-improvement is the constant seeking to create value for myself, and distributing that value to create even more. And that's all for this video. If you're still here, I appreciate you as always, and you should give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts or questions, and join the Basecamp Discord. And links down below if you're interested in coaching. That's all for now. Stay based, and let's go make some actual progress in our life. Bye bye